everyone, it's Mark again. Welcome back to another beautiful Iowa spring day where it's in the low 30s and windy enough to about knock me over. So I've been working on this radio case a little bit. I've already started on this section just to test out my theory. And you can see it's, now I'm not finished, but what I'm doing is doing a good job of getting the little speckles out. So I will take you along while I do the top section and you can see exactly how I do it. There were probably quicker ways with electrical or pneumatic sanders, polishers, things. I'm doing it all by hand partially because I don't have very good equipment, but also partially because I just I'm having these terrible visions of running a buffer on this and then catching a corner and snapping it off because it's, you know, 1950s plastic. So I'm trying to be kind of fragile with it, be gentle, and it's not too scratched up. The sides are pretty much fine. It's just those top surfaces. So I will take you along for the ride for that. Oh, but first I do want to mention, I've got a new soldering iron. Pretty excited. I've only been playing with electronics for almost 30 years. It's about time I got a proper soldering station. All right, let's uh, clean up a clock case. All right, so I'm not gonna film this whole process because this has been explained to death on numerous uh, YouTube videos, I'm sure. But essentially, I am just wet sanding and buffing. If you've ever done that to a car after painting it, it's the same basic process. If you've ever done it to, you know, woodworking project after putting polyurethane or lacquer or whatever, same process. In this case, since the gouges are so deep, I'm starting with 400 and then it's going up to 600. Over here, I stopped there and moved on to Novus Plastic Polish number two. If I had a number three, which is for the, I think it's three, Yes, three is for heavy scratches. If I had some, I would have started with that. I only have one and two. But I think up here, because I was polishing this for way too long, and you can still kind of see the scratches, so I think I'm gonna go up after the 600, I'm gonna hit it with 1,000. And I have some of that, so I should be set to do that. And then I'm just using a bottle of water here, and I just keep it wet. You can do this dry, but it'll just immediately load up the sandpaper and you're not going to get anywhere. Um, I know it's tempting to just say, oh, we'll skip the water stage. That just adds a bunch of mess. And yeah, it does make a mess. Like here you can see some of the, the powdered plastic where it has been collecting. But, you know, the mess is definitely worthwhile compared to the hassle of trying to keep uh, dry sandpaper from getting loaded up and worn out right away and besides when I'm done I'm just gonna rinse it off in the kitchen sink anyway, so it doesn't really matter I do put a paper towel under it though to catch some of the water just so I don't have a puddle on my wooden workbench So that's about it. I think I'm just gonna put you in time-lapse mode and Start working on this top and maybe bring you back periodically. All right, so I've been messing with this now for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. And you can already see that it's starting to make a difference in the severity of those specs. There's no reason to do all this on camera. I'm gonna keep wet sanding with the 400 until those specs have disappeared. Then I'm gonna do the whole thing with 600. Then I'm gonna do the whole thing with 1,000, and I'll repeat it on the side over here, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, well it's the next day. 
I worked on this quite a bit more last night. I got through all the sanding grits. I don't know how much you can see, but you can tell it looks nice and smooth. However, it is dull, and that is where the polishing comes in, which I'm going to do now. Now, I said before I was doing this all by hand, and I might regret this, but I am going to try out my new Harbor Freight polisher. I think it's slow and gentle enough that I should be able to control it, but we're gonna find out together. All right, so I got you zoomed in on just this big surface here. I'm just gonna see what happens and really try hard not to catch something and break it or throw it off the workbench or anything. Okay, I can handle this. So far, so good. Okay, I turned you off while the air compressor ran. Now you can see already just that little bit. It's bringing the shine out compared to the part that has only been sanded and not buffed. But I can still see some sanding marks, so I'm gonna repeat that. And if anyone's wondering, I got the air compressor turned down to about 80 PSI, and I have the actual polisher on low, just to kind of keep everything at a slow, manageable speed, and also hopefully not deplete the air compressor every two seconds, because it's not a very big one. So I'm just gonna keep at it. All right, I learned my first lesson. Cover up everything you don't want to have covered in compound. I'm gonna to have to clean the front of my oscilloscope now. But the scratches are almost gone. Check it out. Probably through the camera it looks about perfect, but here in person you can see some swirl marks and stuff still. Probably give it one more go, and I will bring you back after that. All right, well I'm finished splatter painting my clothing. Yeah, basically I just kept doing what I showed you but for a half hour or an hour and polished all the sides. Um, other than the tops, I just sanded with 1000 grit just to kind of take out any major scratches so then I didn't have to buff those near as long as the top. I don't know how well it comes through here, but I got, I think, a pretty nice finish. There we go. It's at least as good as new, probably better than new because I imagine these just popped out of a mold and whatever they came out of the mold with is how they went off to the line. And I hit the front just real quick because it had some minor scratches. Kind of mad because I took off a couple of letters here. I knew all of this was behind the plexiglass. I didn't realize that the white stuff was printed on top, but what are you gonna do? I think that pretty much concludes the uh, case restoration part of this. I've got the back which doesn't really need anything. I might hit it real quick with the polisher just for the heck of it, but I mean, really it looks pretty good. Oh, another thing I gotta get to. I got new dial cord. I got the smallest I could find, which I think is 0.8 millimeter, and it looks larger than what I have. It actually looks like twice as big as what I have. We'll see. But I think that's a wrap for this video, so. Sorry it wasn't very exciting, but at least now you know. If you've got an old radio with, you probably won't have the same damage I did from paint stripper, but you might have deep scratches, you might have cigarette burns, all kinds of things like that happen. And now you know. Let's sand and buff. Thanks for watching.